Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 260. And today is our lesson number 166. Please turn to page number 260, problem number 5. Problem number 5 is what we're going to do. But before we actually solve problem number 5, I want you to remind you that this is a continuation, continuation of what we learned yesterday. If you have not watched yesterday's video, day, 60, uh, day, day 259, the word that you see on the blackboard here, if you have not watched this video, pause this, watch, pause this video right now and go and watch yesterday's video first, because it is a continuation, as I said, of what we learned yesterday. What we learned yesterday was that if we have a picture with n side, the sum of the angle in an n sided picture is equal to n minus 2 times 100. For example, a triangle has three sides, therefore the sum of the angles in a triangle is simply n minus 2, 3 minus 2, it has three sides, 3 minus 2 times 100, 180. Times 180 is what I meant to say. A quadrilateral has four sides, therefore it is 4 minus 2 times 180, it has 360 degrees. And if you want to know exactly why, you can watch yesterday's video, as I said. A pentagon has five sides, and therefore it's going to be 5 minus 2 times 180, and so, so on and so forth. Here, they're asking us uh, the sum of the, in, uh, the, the measurement of the interior angle. And here's the question. So anyway, this is what we need. The sum of the angles with the n-sided, in a picture with the n-sided, with, with n sides is this n minus 2 times 180. We're going to need that formula. Now just because I refer to it as a formula just now does not mean that you have to memorize the bloody thing. That's the whole point. Don't memorize it. Understand it. Just understand it. There's nothing to memorize. The question for today is this. What is the measure of What is the measure of each of the each of the interior angle of a now in the book they talk about what is the they're talking about the octagon that they give you in problem number four. We'll come to that in a second. What is the measure of what is the measure of each of the interior angle of a, let's start with the hexagon, it is right there, a hexagon, then we'll ask ourselves for octagon, and then finally we'll answer decagon. So again, one more time, they're talking about the measurement of the interior angle of a decagon, there is only one question there. We are going to answer three questions. What is the measure of the interior angle of an hexagon, an octagon, and finally a decagon? Let's do it then. There is your, there is your hexagon. An hexagon, as you can clearly see, has six sides, and therefore the measurements of the uh, measurements of it, some of the interior angles, some of the angles of the picture, a hexagon, is going to be some of the some of the degrees some of the degrees of an hexagon is equal to 6 minus 2 because it has 6 sides 6 minus 2 times 180 6 minus 2 times 180 let's put this here n minus 2 times 180 for an n-sided picture Now next, next. So we already know what the what the what the sum of the sum of all the angles are in in the, in the picture in the hexagon. It is simply four times one eighty. Next question we have to ask ourselves is how many interior angles are there? Well, that's very easy to answer. Hexagon has six sides, and therefore those six sides will make six interior angles, as you can clearly see here. Uh, let's let's number them here: one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are six sides. 
So when you connect these two sides, you get the first angle here, angle one, then you, then you got angle two here, then you got angle three here, when you connect side three and four, you got angle four, and angle five, and finally angle six. Six sides will, will form six interior angle. Therefore, therefore, the measurement of measurement of each interior angle of a hex of an hexagon. I believe it should be uh, the article should be n of of n hexagon because because I I think H, H will be counted as a soft vowel as as, uh, as the French have it of an hexagon. I'm not sure about it though because hexagon has a her sound not a sound. The measurement of each interior angle of a hexagon is going to be is going to be. The total total measurement, which is four times one eighty, that is that is the sum of all the all, all of some sum of the degrees of the hexagon. If you add if you were to add up all of these angles, all six angles will add up to four times one eighty, and then there are six of them. So you divide that by six, and that's it. That's your answer. Divide top and bottom by two, you get three here, and four becomes two. One eighty divided by three is going to give you sixty. So it's sixty times two, which is one hundred and twenty which means each of these angles that you see here, every one of them is 180 degree. All of these angles are 100, sorry, 120 degrees. All of these angles are 120 degrees, provided, provided what? Provided that all of these six sides are equal to each other. If six, it's, if these six sides are equal to each other, then interior angles are going to be equal to each other. Or conversely, if the interior angles are equal to each other, if you're told that these six interior angles are equal to each other, that would imply that all sides must be equal. Do you understand? They go hand in hand. So that's it. That's the that's the measurement of the angle. That's that's what is the measurement? What's the measure of each of the interior angle of a hexagon? The answer is 120. Let's move on to octagons. Octagon, as we know, has eight sides. So let's draw an octagon, shall we? Let's first draw an octagon. It has eight sides. Therefore, the total number of degrees, total number of degrees in an octagon is going to be eight minus two times one eighty. This row octagon, it has eight sides, so that's four, that's four more, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's your octagon. That's what it is, that's what it looks like. And the total number of degrees is this much, 4 times 180. How many interior angles are there? Well, let's find out. Actually, there is no need, there is, there is no need to find out because it has 8 sides. Because it has 8 sides, those 8 sides will form 8 interior angles. And we can verify that very quickly. Here's when this line joins this line, that's your first angle, then the second angle, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, the sixth. That one actually looks like almost a straight line, doesn't it? It's not. Six, seven, and eight. They will form eight angles. They will form eight interior angles. And therefore, each interior angle, each each interior angle of an octagon equals this is four, this is six six times one eighty over eight six times one eighty over eight let's see what we can do divide the top and bottom by two so eight becomes four and six becomes three divide the top and bottom by four again uh, uh, two uh, not again I meant divide the top and bottom by four now divide one eighty by four and this four how many how many fours how many fours in the eighteen eighteen has four fours four fours are sixteen 
the remaining two goes and joins to 0 becomes 20. How many folds in a 20? 20 has 5 folds. So it's 45 times 3. 45 times 3. How much is 45 times 3? How the hell do I know? 45 times 3. I know 40 times 3 is 120. That I do know. 40 times 3 is 120. But it's got to be 15 more than that. Because instead of 40, we have 45. So 120 plus 15 is 135. So each of these angles, let me redraw this thing. I don't like this thing. It's quite ugly. It looks like it's a straight line. It's not. Let me redraw it. If I can find a decent black marker, that would be the wonderful thing. There are eight of them here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, jeez, this is a wonderful job, isn't it? Oh, jeez. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. Each interior angle is 135 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This this angle is 135. This angle is 135. They're all 135. Provided, provided that all the sides of these octagons are equal to each other. And if all the sides are equal to each other, then all the interior angles will be equal to each other. And when that happens, this clearly is not, because as you can see, they are not. They are not, uh, uh, I cannot draw a perfect uh, uh, octagon with all the equal sides. But if they were all equal, which in this case actually they are, even though the picture does not look like it, when sides are, all, when all sides are equal and all, and therefore all the interior angles are equal, or vice versa, in such, a, such an octagon is called a regular octagon. A regular octagon will have each angle equal to 135 degrees. Let's do the decagon. Number of degrees in a in a decagon, number of degrees in a decagon is simply going to be, let me see if I can find another decent black marker. Just if you just give me a second, this is bothering me, this is dying, this is dying. Excuse me. Oh there they are. I knew I bought a whole bunch of them the other day. They are sitting right in front of my face. And I cannot find them. Well, let's do, let's do decagon. Number of degrees in a, number of degrees in a decagon is going to be 10 minus 2 times 180. A decagon will have 10 interior angles. A decagon has 10 sides, therefore it will have 10 interior angle. And that implies that each interior angle will equal each interior angle will equal this amount right here which is 8 times 180 over 10. 8 times 180 over 10 you just cross out the 10 with the 0 here and it's just 18 times 8. 18 times 8. How much is 18 times 8? Let's find out. 18 times 8. Now the reason I'm doing it here the reason I'm doing it here as opposed to continuing here is because I could just as very easily finish, finish the job here. I'm doing it here for your sake so that, you, you're easy, so that it is a little bit easier for, for you to follow my logic. Here, here's what it goes. 8 times 8, 8 is a 64, that's 4, carry 6, carry 6, and then 10 times 8 is carry 6 and, uh, and 8, 8 ones are 8, 8 plus 6 is 14. I'll do it one more time. It did not come out right. That's because I was too busy drawing the arrows. 8 8 is a 64, 4, carry 6. 8 ones are 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. That's all.
is 144 degrees. Each angle is 144 degrees. Each interior angle is 144 degrees in a decagon. That's one thing. That's one. The very last thing that I want to do sum of degrees in a n-sided picture equals n minus 2 times 180. The very last thing that I want to do before, before I finish this uh, tape here because we're going to move on to a different topic and I won't get a chance here is uh, if you watched the yesterday video which I hope you have in yesterday's video I explained where this formula came from in a little bit different way we're going to explain I'm going to explain now the same formula from a different perspective of course you watch yesterday's video you're watching this one right now compare the two understand it there are two ways you can explain where this formula is coming from now I'm going to show you a different way for example let's start with the hexagon It doesn't even have to be hexagon, it could be a pentagon, it could be anything. Let's start with the pentagon. There's my pentagon. Not a very nice looking pentagon, but pentagon nonetheless. Watch what happens. Pick any point, any point at all, pick any point there, and start drawing triangles. How many triangles do you see? Obviously five triangles, because it's pentagon, it has five sides. Five triangles, one, two, three, four, and five. How many degrees in a five in five triangles? Well, each one one triangle has 180 degrees, so five triangles will have five times 180 degrees. That will be the sum of all the angles in all of five tri all of these five triangles. But when we talk about the interior angles, when we talk about the interior angles, we're only talking about these angles: this angle, that angle, this angle, and that angle, and this angle. We're not talking about these angles. These these angles that you see here. I should have started with one. These angles that you see here. These are not interior angles. These are not interior angles of the pentagon. We have to subtract those, those angles. And what is the sum of those angles? What's well, a circle? So we start to subtract the sum of the degrees in a circle, which we know is 360, which, which can be written as 5 times 180 minus 2 times 180. And of course, if you were to take the 180 common, you will end up with 180 times 5 minus 2. Voila, that's your formula. 5 minus 2. N minus 2. That's where it comes from. Let's look at hexagon, shall we? Let's look at a hexagon. An hexagon looks like this. Three sides on the top, three sides on the bottom. Voila. Pick a point, any point at all, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be perfectly in the center. It will make six. It will make six. Oh, why am I doing such a way? Baby way. It makes six, as you can see. It makes six triangles. How many degrees in, a, in six triangles? Well, six triangles will have six times 180. You, exa you know exactly where I'm going with it. But when you talk about the interior angles of, of, of a hexagon, we're talking about these angles. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We're not going to count these angles. These angles are not interior angles of hexagon. We need to subtract those. And those are 360 degrees because they make a perfect circle. So we have to subtract 360 degrees, which of course is same as 2 times 180 degrees. Take out 180 common, and you end up with 6 minus 2, or n minus 2 times 180. That's it. I was going to do one more, but I don't think it's necessary. I was going to, I was going to plot an octagon. Let's do an octagon. This one octagon. See what the octagon looks like. Do you know how to plot, how to draw an octagon? Well, first, take your circle and cut it in four parts, which is very easy. 90 degrees, and then cut each of the 90 degrees into 45 degrees. Well, that's your octagon. The octagon does not have to be a regular octagon. What does it mean? It does not need to be a regular octagon. In other words, these these sides, these eight sides, do not need to be equal to each other. And therefore, each of the interior angles do not have to be equal to each other because we're not interested in finding out what the measurement of the interior angle is, which is what we just finished doing. Here, we simply are trying to understand where the formula comes from. 
So it's an octagon, which means there are eight triangles here. There are eight triangles here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Therefore, all of these eight triangles together will have eight times 180 degrees. But when you talk about interior angles, these angles do not count. These angles are not interior angles of the octagon. These are not. The interior angles are only these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those are the interior angles. So the entire circle in the middle does not count. So you subtract that, minus 360. Which of course is same as two times 180. We just did that twice. Take out 180 common, and you end up with 8 minus 2, and that's your formula, 180 times n minus 2. 180 times n minus 2 right here. So that is another way of looking at where this formula comes from. So now we have two perspectives. Trust me, that is two more than what most people have. Because they just memorize the formula. The teachers throw the formulas, formulas at them. I hate the term formula. They just say, oh, there's a formula. As if, as if it's something sacred, something that just fell from the sky, and you just, you must memorize it. That's it. With no logic, no rationale to it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.